My name is Jessa, and I'm a survivor of human trafficking. So when I was a little girl, my family was part of a group of people that severely sexually abused me, and that sexual abuse turned into me posing for pornographers and um, doing sex acts for the cameras and being raped in front of the cameras. And then that then turned into me being sold to different pimps and then me being sold to friends and those friends um, doing whatever they wanted to do. It was taking place in suburban neighborhoods. I was also taken into um, a few other countries um, for the sole purpose of being trafficked and being sold. That was just my reality of cities and places. When I was 21, a lady approached me and she gave me a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper was her name and her contact information. And she said that if I ever wanted um, to talk to her on the phone, if I ever wanted help, she would be there. So it wasn't for quite a while later that I actually got the courage up to call her and that turned into several months and the message she constantly told me was that this is not who you are. People cannot define who you are, especially sex cannot define who you are and you are so much more than this. And then she told me that I could make a choice and she told me I could make the choice to leave. For me, it was a long, long, long struggle of me in my mind having to redefine what was happening to me, realizing that this was wrong, realizing this is not normal, realizing that this is not okay. Then it was the courage for me to say, this stops, and this stops now. And I remember kissing some of my siblings goodbye and just walking away. This woman, she helped me figure out how to get to the airport and how to get a plane, and I was able to get to her, and she had a safe house for young ladies who have experienced human trafficking, and I was able to enter her program at her safe house. But the sad thing was, was that my visa was only a six-month long tourist visa, and so I had to leave, and so I was taken back to Canada and got to Vancouver and got in a safe house there and was there for about three weeks when we received notification that they were closing. And this was in 2010, so it was just before their Winter Olympics was about to start. And they were, the safe house was closing because the Winter Olympics was taking away the finances. So I was one of the people that was hurt through that. A woman approached me and the first thing out of her mouth was, oh, I think you've been abused. I can see abuse written on your face. She told me that she wanted to be my mom. And she told me that she has a lot of houses of girls like me, and she wanted to take care of me. And I'm like, oh, wow, I have somebody to help me. I have somebody here that I can look to and can trust. When I got to her apartment, though, that's when things changed, and that's when things shifted, and that's when she told me that I was going to have to work for her. Because of my past abuse and because of my past trauma, I was just so vulnerable to people taking advantage of me again. And... That then instilled in me the message, what's wrong with me? What, what have I done? I must be just this way, and this is who I am, and so it's okay for people to use me all the time because that's the way I am. And after that second trafficking experience, it was almost impossible for me to trust anyone. But because of people who were dedicated and people who believed in me, people who saw me... Um, is way more than the things that had happened to me, way more than my story. I, I'm not the same person. I have completely changed, and I'm liking the person that I'm changing into. It's pretty cool, and it's exciting. So after being in the States for um, just a few months, they were like, there's, the people at Safest were like, there's no way that we can let you go back to Canada. Let's start to redefine who you are. And so because I had no education up until that point, as a 21, 22 year old, I had to go back and um, the lady told me basically that if I can read, I can learn anything. So I took a black Sharpie and I wrote on my arm, if I can read, I can learn anything. I enrolled for college and was able to get a GED and went to school, um, was accepted. And I never thought that would happen, that a school would accept me. And that was when it birthed inside of me that 
Someday I'm going to get my doctorate in clinical psychology to work with people who have experienced complex trauma and PTSD to give them the hope in the future that I've been given. That's my dream.